Okay, so this is a conversation, a conscious mind conversation between the amazing Erica and Courtney uh, discussing some recent sessions that Courtney has had uh, to be able to give everyone a chance to express their feelings and thoughts and processes over what's been going on for everyone. So hi ladies, thanks for joining me today. Hello. Hello, thank you. <laughs> Um, we wanted to have a conversation to be able to share and unpack the, uh, the sessions between uh, Courtney experiencing the old earth and, and seeing her father and then the other session where she was connected to her father asking him questions about um, after the shift and what was going on. And then, because that wasn't enough for her to process, they gave her the most profound upgrade that I think I've ever had in any of my sessions in quantum healing. So you've got a lot going on, Courtney. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot. It's been very, um, I mean, as much as it felt like this duality of feelings in the sessions. It also feels like that in my conscious um, state, um, just because it's so surreal being in it and, and going through the emotions, feeling it, seeing you know everything, and then coming out of it and going back to everyday life, you know, the normal routine. Um, and just, yeah, just processing something that hasn't yet happened yet, knowing what's coming. So, you know, in many ways, I feel, I feel very blessed um, for this work and very, very grateful to be able to have and know this experience. And um, like I was telling Joe earlier that, um, you know, without my dad knowing all of this, I, it makes me feel even closer to my dad. Um, just knowing and feeling that we have this connection beyond this existence of the 3D reality that we know now. Um, so that has been very comforting in a sense. Um, but at the same time, it's like, but it's my dad, <laughs> you know, it's, um, and it's surprising. It was surprising to me because I, I really thought that he would have, um, you know, I would have assumed that he would have, would have shifted um, just because he's always been, just in my in my eyes you know super open and open-minded to my beliefs and just you know the belief in me and um you know thinking outside the box and and whatnot but um but now I get you know I get where his contract is and I get um you know this the connection with my stepmom with his wife and how it all, you know, how it all plays out. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm beyond grateful for being able to know all this and being able in my mind and knowing to be able to leave the greatest gift, you know, behind with the, with the manual, with the, um, you know, the, the book, the manual that's to come. So, you know, to be able to, I just, I don't know, I, I can't even like articulate the, um, just the, how in awe I am of being able to have the experience and to be able to leave this behind, which is ultimately a connection and a bridge of both sides. Yeah, it was incredibly extraordinary. Both those sessions where you were connecting to your dad 
uh, were so heartbreaking in so many ways, but also super uh, insightful to what he was experiencing. And it seems how you just described him as being super open. I mean, that's part of why he succeeds, succeeds so well on the old earth and as inspiration to many. Yeah, I mean, just knowing how he is and like, Joe, when we were having the conversation with him where I was, you know, talking to him and like, I mean, it, those were his words, like him coming through and be like, I wouldn't have let, let you go, you know, and that's my dad. Like my dad would be in just in a puddle of tears, holding on and hugging me if he knew it was the last time that he would see me. I mean, he'd be pitiful. Oh. And he, it's so, it's like, I want to protect him from those feelings, you know, like, but at the same time, like, that's totally his personality. And like, when he said that he's, he's happy that it's him and that it's not me being left behind, you know, like he would, he's, I don't know. It's just. As much as it's heartbreaking for us to, to hear all of these experiences, um, you know, it's, it's a journey to get to understand what the shift and what new earth is and what old earth is and process all of our emotions and it's mind bending to think that um you know it's someone that you profoundly love but yet you know when we look at our friendship and journey and you know I had my I had my first QHHT session and then the next day I I saw you for the very first time and I remember in the first of the class um there's like dancing and it was like I saw you with two other women and it was kind of like a little group of three that were dancing and after you do quantum sessions uh well for, for myself for sure I mean I started channeling and I was really connected to uh two things that were really unusual for me in certain ways and the very first time I saw you you were dancing with two other women and I I just wish I had my camera because as I was walking past it was like the scene of three graces dancing and it was this beautiful this beautiful like Greek uh Roman-esque uh three women dancing and I just I saw this it was very surreal for me and I just thought wow those those, I'm so lucky to be here. These people are just amazing. And what I just saw almost feels so surreal. And then, you know, move forward to our friendship still continuing for this time. And there's just always something that I felt so connected and um, I've respected you ever since meeting you. And being on this journey of hearing about this crazy stuff called the shift and new earth mm. and all that wacky jazzy stuff that keeps meeting me in every session I see and hear um it was incredible and it's like heartbreaking to go with you through this um but also we're training ourselves to remember the bigger perspective of it and to honor all of those who need to be here on the old earth for profound reasons that can't even be explained in full detail publicly. Right, right. No, I mean, the feeling is absolutely mutual for our friendship and what I think of you, and I absolutely adore you. And the gifts and what you have brought to my life and these experiences are absolutely priceless. Like it's just, it's mind bending in itself. <laughs> I did feel like in you, our first session that we did together and you were asking about like level three practitioner 
should I go for it? And should I do my website? Mm -hmm. And then your subconscious higher self was like, oh, I guess she could. You know, and I was like, oh, because I knew what I was getting in sessions and, and I hadn't really discussed it too openly with you because I was still trying to unbend my own mind about all the sessions that I was hearing from here. And and I just I just thought, oh, this might be my opportunity. And I think I remember saying, why subconscious? What, you know, tell me more. What, you know, why do you think she would be able to, you have, I think I said she won't have time. And I was like, I knew this was my my gap to like get out the information without me saying anything. So I keep scratching at the, well, why won't she have time to do, you know, she's very passionate about this work. Why can't she get level three? And um, and then it kind of opened up. Well, you know, they all, I almost feel like they say, well, Joanne, you know about the shift. And then I'm like, I know, but my client doesn't. So tell me more. <laughs> Um, I do feel like we, we touched on new earth though, in that first session I had with you. Yeah, we Because did. I was thinking about, um, transportation and, um, there was something else, but yeah, no, it, the, I mean, the whole session just unfolded very naturally, very beautifully. And that was a complete like eye opener on many levels of where I was putting my attention at the time you know yeah yeah it, yeah it was extraordinary but I really am cautious I mean um especially when I know the client really hasn't asked too much about their future in terms of the new earth or the shift or anything and like you had some really great valid questions that everyone would want to know you know business plans future stuff and um I just was wondering if how your subconscious would sort of like uh, subtly give you that information. So when I kept asking, well, why does she not have enough time to do? Because they were kind of, it was, I remember too, they're like, oh, well, she, I guess she could do a website if she really wanted to spend her time doing that. And it was like, they were hinting to me, go for it. And I was like hinting to them, no, you tell her because I don't want to tell her <laughs> in a session while she is open to this. Because I, because I know a lot of people who don't understand what hypnosis is, it's um, they assume, oh, it's so suggestible. You know, the protect practitioners just guiding this, the clients and the sessions. If this is the case, I would be guiding people to happiness and, you know, just really easy streets and so easy to love yourself and get over your baggage and fantastic. And, you know, the whole concept of the new earth, the shift, the old earth, it's a mind if you see K and it is really hard to process the emotion. Sorry. I'm like, I'm just having an ordinary conversation with you ladies. So um, no, it's, it's, it's good. I want to go ahead. I want to interject really fast. This whole journey is uh, all the things that have been listed, but also uh, just a profound journey of self, of self, of who each of us, um, down to the core of, of, of life, of just being alive or being alive in the sense of just uh, the, the essence of who we are uh, and what we want in this whole world, in this whole universe. That is the journey we are on here. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Oh, so true. So true. When you take all of the, like, all of the outside noise and all of the just chitter chatter and you just get down to the essence of like, what, what <laughs> is it? Like, what is the, what's the great wide open, like the infinite possibility, the infinite of, it's just, yeah. We are yeah. all amazing. We are all each individually amazing. But we are also mind bending every all the choices and the decisions and all of the stuff that can go on. It's uh, all reflective uh, duality. I love that you use duality a lot, Courtney. Yeah, yeah. And really, that was not really so much in my vocabulary or thinking, you know, until all of this, till these sessions came in. <laughs> 
all currently living in this duality now of knowing the bigger perspective of the situation that's coming and that is going to occur for us um, and also trying to still live in 3D. And that is, I feel like this is, I mean, I'm, I don't want to, it's our pre, pre-New Earth feelings and emotions that we're having to get over and process. I feel like with that profound upgrade session that they gave Courtney, they want her, as soon as the shift happens, they want her running. They want her fully accessing all of the upgrades that she just got to be able to help assist. There is no resting for her. She is, you know, they want her to have all of this advancement and that's what we all got to hear and experience. Um, and how do you feel after that experience? Um, well, it was quite late here, so I went, I did go to sleep, but no, um, I, I don't know, it's, it's still, it's so hard to even relay in words what I felt energetically, um, I mean, different parts of my body at the same time were feeling so many different sensations so like at one point my stomach felt like it was like this hollow hole you know it just felt like it was like wide open and went into this in my mind like into this deep space while my legs are feeling like um they're tingling yet there's uh you know discomfort and pain running through them um my my chest like everything was just so intense I know like with the breathing um I obviously like I didn't feel like I could you know breathe normally um and then in my head my head was my face was tingling oh my gosh it felt like a ton of little needles on my face um it was just so many different sensations happen simultaneously so that was like, whoa, you know, um, but I mean, obviously everything settled down, you know, later into the, um, into the session. Um, I will say that when I connected with source and that the higher version of myself or whatnot, um, I felt completely out of body, but it felt like my body was like, on, my physical body was on hold like okay just pause here for a minute and it felt like it was just like like expanded like full of helium or something um and then once I gradually kind of started coming out of that state you know I started feeling the sensations again but afterwards um I mean afterwards it was everything I felt I felt fine um the the head like Oh my gosh, feeling my head inside my head move around was just crazy. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that, but I do, I do feel like I felt that the outside of my face was shifting. Um, I, I could feel that the outside of my face was moving and like, and shifting, but the inside of my head was like, mm, 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 mm. we're gonna just like fire open this and we're gonna like tweak this and we're gonna move this. And yeah, that was, that was pretty wild. And then, so yeah, but at, at the end I felt, I felt calm, like my body felt good. Um, I did, I, I did go outside after it was like the night after the full, full moon. And I grounded myself in the grass and I looked up at the moon and just was like, okay, you know, just not even maybe a minute I did that. And then I got in bed and my ears started ringing like really loud. And I was like, you're not done yet. Oh my goodness. All I could do was laugh. <laughs> um, but I, you know, saying thank you at the same time. Um, and then the next day, the next morning, I guess I got about five and a half hours of sleep and it was hard. I, I normally pop up in the mornings, but it was, 
um, it was hard to get up that next morning. Um, I just, my body felt, felt heavy. Like it just felt like dense. And, um, but then, I mean, once I got up, I was fine. You know, um, I, I felt okay. I did listen to it. Um, I listened to the session and that was the next morning. And I was, that was hard to get through. <laughs> that was, um, it was hard to listen to myself. It was hard to experience in my mind what I was going through physically at that time. Um, but, you know, there was that part of me that knew when it started, like, okay, I want to follow through. Like, I want, I want to get to the bottom of this. And, you know, with you, Joanne, like, I completely trusted you. I trusted the process. You said something where at one point um, about, you know, the, um, my higher self and my spiritual team taking care of me. Like, I know you're not gonna, you know, I don't know. I don't remember exactly what you said, but I just, I do know that in that state of being, I was like, that gave me such comfort because I was like, yeah, exactly. Like nothing bad is going to happen to me. Like I'm, I'm going through this. I'm getting through this for a reason. Yeah. So. Well, it was very intensive. And um, when we started the public session, I think you had been doing that for like 40 minutes prior. I think I can't remember. Like it, we didn't share the full session because it just was a lot of the same uh confusion yeah. and overwhelm and it was like birthing it was very intense now i'm wondering if people are listening to that session and wondering if they are relating the experience of the shift and the upgrades to how you experienced it and the the extremes the extreme feeling of the shift i think would be only a fraction of what you were experiencing because it sounded like you were being upgraded for all of the collectives. It was a mass upgrade. So you could identify and be able to know how to tune in people while they were aboard the ships um, traveling to New Earth. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, all of the collective star seeds that. Um, we're shifting and knowing what that particular collective was going through and how they were experiencing things, I guess, physically. Mm, yeah, yeah. It was so strange because we were not expecting that profound situation at all. Like we were ill prepared for it because we were just mm. thought we would have some fun sessions together again. And it yeah, really took us, well, definitely took me by surprise. Um, and I've only had, uh, I've only had a, a sort of similar situation where in the very first part of a session, they took my client's conscious mind into a room and she was like guarded and guided down into a room where there was a woman there. And as soon as she entered into the room, her body disappeared and um, disintegrated. And I was... It was really long and slow and I was wondering why are we taking this time like, let's move forward let's move forward and they just wouldn't let him move forward and then I was not able to understand what was actually happening and then uh, they the subconscious came in and said we've actually taken her body uh, we will return it at the end of the session I'm here to give you answers now and I was like oh okay and just kind of <laughs> just kind of asked all the questions and then um it, towards the end of the session they said we've returned her body to you now and then I could ask well, what just happened there because for some reason I was expecting it to be like a past lifetime or a future lifetime not current right now and it was yeah very you just you just don't know what you're gonna get in these sessions and that's kind of the excitement to be prepared for anything but your recent experience of those upgrades were very profound. And I think because I love and adore you so much to hear you painting and getting so distraught did trigger me a lot to just want to break down. I mean, I think, 
you were so upset in some areas it was really hard to not go into panic mode I, it's I, I've never assisted anyone on a with a birth before but this was probably my closest spiritual birth ever uh, it was very intensive <laughs> yeah and I mean I don't even remember I don't that's the thing is when I went back and listened and Annette, you said something about um you know crying and I was like oh I cried you know and I didn't even re I didn't remember that I cried well I so, think I think I was saying to you uh, afterwards, I'm really sorry that I cried. I, I was feeling really overwhelmed at parts. It was when they moved the brain around and it was so overwhelming for you. We'd already had done like 40 minutes of it or what it like, I have no concept of time with that session, but it was wearing me emotionally down because they weren't giving me the answers of what was actually happening. And so I had to endure that with you and just be in this, I'm trusting the process, I'm trusting the process, but could you give me a head, like not you, Courtney, but could your spiritual team give me a heads up? Um, but of course, now we have hindsight. I think I would have just been like, sweet, have it, let me know when you're finished. <laughs> 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 that would have been easier. <laughs> I know, but you still, you still navigated it beautifully. I was saying earlier that I was, there was a split second. I thought what someone's team was going, someone, someone's team was going to stop it. And then I was just quickly like, you know, because of who you are, Joe, and, and, and your knowledge and the dedication that you put towards this work and understanding it, understanding how it works for the people that you're helping or that you're talking to um it came through um big time through helping Courtney and it was it was very very cool to actually see it go through and Courtney I've told you like uh I felt bad for like two <laughs> seconds like two seconds and then I was like you're a big being it just all the stuff that you've already experienced with your dad and what you've overcome um I'm like, she, like, my brain was like, as much as we all hate, like, we asked for these things, my brain was still like, she has asked for this. She has willingly, like, um, uh, I know her heart. I, I, I talked to her and, and, and I'm just like, she a hundred percent was probably the first one that was like, I'll do it. I will do it. Please give it to me. Um, I can, um, I can tackle this. I can handle this. Um, I can handle what comes with this um, experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great observation. And Courtney, do you feel like, because it was so heavy, the last two sessions we've done together uh, regarding your dad and the old earth, that it was I mean, those two sessions alone were very undeniable of the situation ahead because there were so much details and experiences and senses that we both had during those sessions that if we still needed some validation that what we know was going to happen is happening, those that's the like cement on already, you know, hundreds of hours of sessions um, that we have, you know, uh, heard and, and experienced. This was it's so undeniable now, but do you feel like, what do you think with the timing? Do you feel like it's because the shift's just so soon that they needed to upgrade you? Or because it was the very next session that we had, I'm just curious what you feel, um, the significance of them having that powerful upgrade occurred then. I mean, I feel like time is of essence right now with where we are, what we're doing. Like, I don't, I mean, I, if we didn't have, if we had more time, I feel like then they may have like lightened up a little bit on our, um, on our last session, you know, but I feel like, like, this is, this has to get out. Like this has to take place. These upgrades have to happen. Like everything we need, everybody to like chop, 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 you know, Everybody's got to just 
do what they got to do. Like whether it's a move, you know, and you need to be in a certain location um, at this particular time, or you need to have these certain upgrades take place within your body, or, you know, you need to have a heavy conversation, like whatever it may be. I think that it's all coming to the surface for it to be done in this time. And like, there's a lot of people that are feeling these energies. I mean, we can look at the, um, I feel like I can't ever say this right, but the Schumann resonance. <laughs> I feel the same way. <laughs> I feel the same way every oh, time. But I don't know exactly. How. <laughs> Am I saying it right? Can I just <laughs> this um, Bermuda Triangle? <laughs> there you go. You got it. <laughs> Holy, I hate it when I stumble over words. I just sound like such a ugh. So yeah, I was so kicking myself. I said that word about a hundred times afterwards. It's so mm -hmm. irritating. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't like you that couldn't say it. Maybe it was them that couldn't say it. Like. <laughs> Maybe they couldn't figure out the word. <laughs> uh, what about when they were talking about Nubaru and the assimilation and I couldn't get assimilation out? <laughs> and then, yeah, there's a few times where they have not allowed me to, not allow me, but there's a block in saying the word. There was, it was a perfectionist as well. I don't know. There's just too many sessions to recall now of the times where I have uh, made a fool out of myself. <laughs> No, you haven't made a fool of yourself. I think it's just extra, like, extra attention or emphasis on that word for some reason. Yeah, super cool. Um, I, I just, you know, we were talking the other day um, about, you know, knowing all this information, having these profound experiences that make this information that we hear undeniable we have you know um all this content of information we've had our own personal experiences which just you cannot deny and then we're still living this duality of the third dimension where we've got our responsibilities of our children uh of our friends and family uh and they do not and they have not shared all of the hundreds of hours that we will we have all listen to with this information and so many people have tried to have a conversation um and you know where do you start where do you start that honey I've got a conversation to say um <laughs> like it gets it kind of becomes ludicrous like so you know that saying it's not the end of the world well update we can't say that anymore because it is going to be the end of the world but how do you, how does one approach it and when you don't like I know with most uh I was going to say most men but it's not the case at all most people who have no idea about this information or comprehend the shift in the new earth they all want as we all did Oh, can you just give me the proof? Did I hear this on the news? Because if it's not on the news, I pro it's probably not true. Um, has TMZ covered this? Like, you know, we want to find out where is the proof? Where is the information? Where can we get this from? And when we only can say, this is what I've heard in sessions, and then, um, you know, it, it still sounds so distant and removed. But people who know about Dolores Cannon and her work, they have that book on the three wave of the volunteers in the new earth. And of course, as we know, as we have talked to Nostradamus, uh, many times Erica and I have spoken to uh, Mr. Nostradamus, who actually, Courtney, I forgot to tell you this. I've only <laughs> told Erica. Um, I was uh, reading through the, the proof of the book, the PDF, and um, and I was thinking, oh, I wonder how Erica is going, knowing she's going to be reading this too. And Adosha Damas came in and he said, we should write a funny thing for her from me. And I was like, what? No, like, and he was like wanting to like add a little, I think it was kind of like a little love letter, like, hi, Erica, <laughs> what you doing? I'm thinking of you. Like he does have the sentences for her. It's so funny. But I feel like he's still here. His energy is still here. Um, and, you know. It doesn't course. surprise me. I'm telling you, ever since we have connected random times, 
I like, it's almost like I think about him and I'm always just like, hey, like in my brain, like I have a full conversation, like, hey, send him, hey, like send him high, like however it works, send him high. Just randomly, I thought about that. I've always just like, just randomly. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> it's interesting because, you know, when I, when I just suddenly thought of Erica, then he pops in to say, give a message to Erica, put it in this book. She would find it funny. Um, as a lot, you know, she he knows that you're really focused on uh, all the content and all that sort of stuff. And I mean, he he is a wordsmith too, and so it's like he he knows you. Uh, so it's extraordinary that little side thing. We have to explore. Maybe what I feel like, yeah, we'll have to explore and see if, if it's just like a soul family situation or if there is something else there um but I know he is very interested in this timeline now that we have made that connection so it is extraordinary you know I'm always down <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said <laughs> I'm always just curious like uh it's this is all is uh, funny these are always funny but it's always my mind um w- with all of us with him with us it's 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 like we laugh about just the initial funny like oh these things but then when we really sit and think about it it's like we think about so like this bigger thing like like but like why what is going on um um, it's almost like we come away from those initial and we just, there's just this expansion of wanting to learn more. And that's just what's so exciting is to just expand and learn more. <laughs> yeah. I feel like with the vibration, the higher vibrations of the planet uh, for a little bit of time now, I am still in this, I wake up in this really sig- silly kind of giggly mood where I am just really lighthearted with things. And so I just laugh at really silly, kind of like 12 year old behavior sort of uh, jokes. And, you know, I just, there's definitely a shift in my, my um, not taking life so seriously while still respecting it. But I think this is part of my coping mechanism, understanding what's going to occur and why I accept all of the whys, I accept all of the contracts um, but the responsibility of knowing that whatever information we put in the book uh, can potentially be someone's lifeline of coping with the bigger perspective. And we all have appreciated the bigger perspective of things. It, like, I want to say it's almost like every word in every chapter drips with that, drips with uh, another person that is, that not even other person it'll be other people like people that will connect to uh to so much um just so much perception um uh across the book do you think it will help people if they read it uh before the shift happens and that will help them process and understand the purpose of why others will be left here um and will that help them Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like a, the, the only thing that comes to my mind, even going through the different parts separately and together, um, it's, it is like a giant book of just this big perception because of just really honestly, so many people, so many beings have, have given uh, to this to this work that you have um, accepted. I mean, you accepted this. Uh, I have said this before. We've joked about that this hasn't been a you thing, but you accepted this. <laughs> Literally wrote a whole entire book in t- like two weeks. Mm-hmm. It was like amazing. It was so amazing to even see. But because you accepted this, Someone else could have accepted this. You know how these things work. Uh, It is put out there and it's who will accept it. Who will accept it and and do the work and and process this and you accepted it. And then since you accepted it, um, 
look at all of the rest of us who have a uh, grace like we've just uh followed in your wonderful beautiful footsteps and uh, uh taken our challenges with the with the same um I don't even know what the word is, but with the same enthusiasm that you have with the cha- with this challenge. I don't think you guys follow me. I feel like we were stepping side by side and it was teamwork. It was because it's been a mind if you see K many times to be able to kind of process this and accept this. And if 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 Courtney was, you know, after that first session and you know, she listens back to it and she could have been like, what the F did you just do to my mind? You know, like (laughs) I was not willing for that information. And I kept hearing Dolores saying to me, they only give you information when you're ready for it. She's ready for it. She's ready for it. And I was like, that's a lot of pressure that you're putting on Courtney, who is planning to have this fantastic, I mean, we've got kids, you know, we're thinking about our retirement and, and all that other stuff, right? The, the luxury of assuming you've got, we've got another 50 odd years here. Um, and the reality is, uh, okay, so we have to stop thinking about our futures here and the hopes and dreams that we've already uh, we've worked everything towards to stop and process and apply that while also everyone that we love around us is still living for those holidays in the future, the kids' graduations, all of that stuff. And we have to still be present and make choices and plan for our futures here on earth, even though we've had such profound experiences within our hearts, within our minds, we know that all the time that we're putting into living in the 3D is not going to be an eventuality. And that is, is quite a mind bend. Yeah, I want to go ahead and add a little bit of perception into this conversation just for the people who are listening. We all three on this call, all three have small kids, right? Uh, Courtney, you have, uh, yeah. your kids are all small mm-hmm. too. So yeah, all three of us have at, in our homes currently, small children um, on this journey with us. So uh, just as a perception out there into other people's lives, we're not, uh, we're not just taking this lightly. Uh, we take the, this very seriously, um, especially when it comes to our own lives. These our responsibilities of functioning as parents and adults and as friends. It's, it's very challenging. And so, um, you know, talking to our friends about what we believe uh, can be very overwhelming because when we talk to them, we don't have the proof of all the sessions. How do you summarize hours of content and information into a, hey, by the way, uh, X, Y, and Z don't, doesn't matter because, you know, we're shifting to a new planet. That must sound completely insane. Yeah, I mean, I think that even, you know, for my situation, I can talk to my husband about it, but not to the full extent of where I am in this and, you know, everything, all the sessions I listen to. Um, But we can still have like a conscious conversation around it. You know, he doesn't think that we're going to be shifting to another planet, you know, um, I do, you know, but I, I, I get it. Like I understand where he's coming from, but, and it's good because he can now hear me and I can hear him, you know, I get it. Like it is, it's a, it's a big concept to grasp or not even con- like, it's a big thing to grasp, you know? And I know that, um, I was talking to a friend of mine, um, she lives in Canada. We grew up together, but, um, you know, I haven't talked to her in years. We called up, we um, connected over Instagram and then we got on the phone and connected and she's been on her, her own spiritual journey. Um, but like, so I asked her, I said, so what do you think about new earth? And she was like, oh, I haven't heard about new earth. Tell me more, you know? And so the way that I approached the conversation, I was like, well, you know, there's, um, there's a couple of different um, ways that people are interpreting it. You know, some people are saying that it's just a, 
a shift in consciousness and it's all happening here on this planet. And, you know, and some people think that it's like a shift to a new earth. And she was like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. You know, she was like, there's been the fall of many civilizations in, in our history. So I get that, you know, and just that it was easy. Like that was an easy conversation, you know, and, but I wasn't forcing anything. I wasn't pushing my beliefs onto, um, onto her by any means. It was just kind of like, well, there's, there's this and there's this. And, but she gravitated towards the shift off planet. And I was like, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so. it, it, it is, I'm confident enough after all these experiences to know and believe the information from sessions without a doubt. But when it is having to talk to someone who is completely oblivious to some of the basic things that are happening around us that still need proof, um, you know, I don't even bother going there. It's just not necessary. I can't. I don't need everyone in my world to know the content of my work because, you know, they just don't. I need to sort of have some sort of normal life as well where I'm not thinking about how is this going to look with the situation? What is this person going to do? And I don't, I kind of want to have a little bit of a normal life where I'm not constantly tapping into people's energy fields and knowing their higher selves are saying, could you just push them a little bit harder here because they're they've got this blind sort of the blind spot of their inner work or whatever. Like I you know I do have I do have people that I connect with who do listen to the sessions and I feel like I'm constantly connected in to their higher selves to give them that guidance and support, even though sometimes it's a it's always an unconditional loving role, but sometimes it's tough love and other times it's supportive love. And whatever so it's it's nice to have some normal time to to just to just be and to not pressure on myself and focusing on this 24 7 but I do enjoy getting the content and the information understanding what is happening um but I just feel like there are people out there who have no one to talk to and this this information resonates with them so profoundly that there is this isolation that they have. I recommend them talking to themselves about it actually helps release because when I had really no one to talk to, just my clients and you don't become friends with your clients really, um, you have just, you have a, that professional level of, of a relationship. And so I was having to process a lot of it myself and then waiting for other practitioners to share their information and it was very confusing time. So I'm very like, grateful that now I have, um, I have a greater connection of friends who you know, have been clients who still just resonate with this work. We end up that we've had other lifetimes together. I feel like I've found an amazing tribe of my own, which is able to help me. And this is why I say, we're all walking to good together on this journey. And I would not be where I am without people uh, like both of you, amazing women, supporting uh, me with all of my emotional roller coasters as I'm trying to put everything into place um, because I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to miss anything out of that book. That was, as soon as I accepted that book, I felt some pressure. I didn't realize it was Courtney's dad coming in to want to talk. And, um, and there's the pressure of what if, I miss something crucial that's not in the book and then people are stuck because I see people listening to these sessions who are stuck so and I'm thinking if they can't listen to the sessions uh and they've just got one you know one a book is this going to be enough um I had to learn how to balance my worry and concern and this is why the incredible Dolores when she came in and said it's never going to be complete it doesn't need to be complete it's not meant to be complete it is part of their process of stopping and thinking and questioning because ultimately always going within is the answers. Yeah. Well, you have had, I mean, this work was definitely all lined up and meant for you to take this role because for it to, for you to make it happen. And yes, I mean, you know, 
everything coming together, you know, with the divine timing of, of it all, like, I, I just, you were meant for it. Like, I could think taking it on <laughs> but it didn't come out before in December and I still believe very firmly that the December date was supposed to happen so I guess my contract um after December was sure throw on a book in that <laughs> little uh, that time yeah well no matter when I mean Yes, I think that the book will benefit people reading it before the shift and it will, they'll get a whole nother perspective um, reading it after if, you know, if that's the case, because it relates to so many different dynamics of relationships throughout and just so many like bigger perspectives and life lessons and the bigger purpose and what do you think, though, the difference between listening to the sessions versus reading the sessions? Is there a different frequency of energy? Can people absorb it differently? Um, I'm just questioning that um, because you know, we've had that situation recently where the woman's copying content from the sessions as her own, but she's writing it out. And I get a firm sense that that is to merely uh, shift the... Um, the opportunity for others to get the same information, but from a different format. And mm -hmm. um, I know when I read um, part of the, you know, part of your book, um, that I, even though I could, um, I could go back and like hear the sessions, you know, playing out, there was a different depth to, to reading it. I got, um, I don't know. It, it was a different energy for sure. I feel like not in a, not in a bad way, not in a good way. I mean, it was just, it was just different. Um, when I, I feel like deeper processing almost too, though. Yeah. It's like, it literally is I, like, I said, like I said, it's literally a book of work that's put together of, of, of the big picture of the, of the questions and the thoughts of the bigger perspective it's not um a journey to the bigger perspective it literally is a piece of work that literally literally embodies um that bigger perspective across the board it just it the whole work embodies bigger perspective so when you read it it literally you're you're reading uh, your, ex your, your body, your mind is accepting, um, a bigger perspective as you process it, when you read it. Um, uh, yeah. What I got to say when I asked that question was when we're reading that, it's like our higher selves are telling us this information. So it is yeah. resonates with us more at a, at a more authentic range because we're gobbling up every single aspect of it when and we have to focus a lot of the times when we're listening people seem to either tune out get upgraded fall asleep do whatever fold washing and you know uh, there's distractions but when you're having to focus you're absorbing all of the content well yeah before and after afterwards we they won't have all of these distractions uh that happen so literally they're gonna want to sit and just digest this because it it is information like you've said in the different sessions um it's it's information when there is no information mm -hmm. um uh, and when these some of these people don't have the ability to know how to connect to these higher things so um essentially that is what it is it's it's the higher selves that are just uh, coming through on these these stories and these writings that are being put together with everything for the people because the intention is for the people who will be here that don't have anything they don't have all this other stuff they have a book they have time they have themselves they are helping process and deal with other things around them but that it, that is what it is.
um, yes, they can learn to connect in this book. Um, um, almost makes it, I want to say, maybe a little bit more approachable just because the whole piece is of higher of higher perspective. Um, so it's almost like it uh, explains it because it's in word form, maybe better. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can go back and reread a sentence <laughs> and then like, <laughs> reabsorb, you know, instead of like you're listening and, you know, like Joe said, I know I'm guilty of this too. Like I'm first thing in the morning, I'm checking YouTube to see if there's a new session, you know, but I'm making the kids lunches and I might zone out on something that was just said to, you know, to try to like interpret it or apply it in my head or, you know, not even realizing, oh, okay, I gotta, I gotta tune back in to what they're talking about now, you know? So, and that's why too, every time you go back and listen to it, you get a whole nother layer. You pick up a whole nother message that you may have missed the first time or two around, you know? So I think too, with, with reading it, um, you, you process, you can go back and reread a session, play it out in your mind, play it out, you know, however it works for you, um, to incorporate it and, and apply it. But, um, I say in sessions they can the client more than they can handle and I feel like uh, people listening to the sessions will purposely be forced to tune out or get distracted from something they're not supposed to be exposed to and so I'm certainly not um, yeah I, 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 I believe and trust that everything what people each individual person can hear and process at the given time that they're listening to it is the most appropriate that they can deal with um, and yeah, I, I, it's it's I can, it's like magical how that all unfolds. That we can all hear the same thing, but have different takeaways from whatever level we're at to be able to process it. It's I love this work so much. I am so I don't know if you know this sad, but I'm kind of addicted to um, mm. profound <laughs> healing of people. It gives me so much joy to know that we can the detail the like the proof in the pudding of you know having a client and then they're noticing suddenly their husband's waking up you know the kids are waking up and there is this is higher frequency energy in the home like obviously it's nothing that I'm doing but it's the whole session and the higher selves they're asking for help and it just just feels so incredible plus the blessing of all of the higher energy um did we cover in this conversation how the higher energy now is so overwhelming because it's more unconditional love than we've ever experienced in this lifetime? And so this makes us feel like we're on the verge of tears. We get confused whether it's overwhelmed emotions, that is something lower, a fear or worry or exhaustion versus almost a, a pure joy, unconditional love. We didn't, but I love that. I love it. Every time I hear you say it, every time I'm, it just, it, oh, it get, it has given me a different perspective, which I love different perspectives. Um, it's just, it's given me a bigger perspective into something I already thought I mastered, uh, in a way. Um, I, I definitely look at recent, um, emotional things that have happened. And now, since you said that, like I said, I, it just popped in my head. I'm like, no, I was actually crying. Yes. I was way overwhelmed emotionally, but I was overwhelmed. Like, cause I was excited that I was recognizing what was going on, like what was happening within myself in a situation. And I was able to recognize it. So yes, I was overwhelmed, but it was good. It was very good. A uh, good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was incredible that, you know, we're working on this book and you're experiencing, um, you know, two very heavy personal things uh, regarding the end of life cycles. And it's just, I mean, just the coincidences and the synchronicities of experiencing those feelings and applying this just mind, it's a mind bend. It's extraordinary times. 
it all goes to together. That's uh, to answer one of the questions that you asked earlier, um, just to how to approach it and talk about it. Uh, I don't really approach and talk about it to too many people, but um, as far as just the knowledge and uh, needing proof or from the sessions, because we it's not like we can bring all these sessions with us. It's noticing all of the other stuff that goes with this. It's not just a session or a lesson. It's not just that. It's not just something you listen to. If you're paying attention, most of all of us, we hear it in a, in a lesson, in a session that you have, and then we're experiencing it in our life. Uh, in some form or fashion, we are experiencing it to understand it. So it's not just just this thing. It's it's everything. And it's it's in our lives. And it's the people and things that are revolving in our lives that are still, um, that still have something to do with the information that we're getting almost every day or every couple of days. The application of the lessons in, in the session to be able to apply the content. Um, and make yeah. it and if you recognize all of that, then you know yourself, you know self and you know your information. Uh, it becomes easy because just like Courtney was saying how she was able to guide, you're able to guide questions because the whole point is uh, we just, uh, at this point, we just uh, want to help someone, like you said, who might not have anyone to talk to. Uh, we don't care if they actually know about the shift or not. We just want to be there to um, open up these possibilities for, for the people that want to know who are searching. Mm. I did see on a Facebook group, someone asking about uh, what they thought was going to be on the shift and the, you know, what do they think about new earth? And I don't know, there might've been like 200 or so comments and like 95 of them all said, very firmly it's a shift in consciousness you don't go anywhere dummy and then it was kind of this attitude of you know consciousness 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 and um, I'm just like where did they get that information from and who are they still trusting and believing uh, and they haven't questioned it themselves because a lot of the people who've gone within can sense that there is something bigger and it's certainly not a shift in consciousness. But even if there's a shift in consciousness, um, <laughs> where's the unconditional love? Where's the uplifting? Where's the positivity? Where is all of these things that are supposed to go with? It's see how it's not just one thing. It's not like, oh, it's we're staying here. Uh, it's just a shift in consciousness. It literally is the action of saying it. Like, for what action are you saying this to other people? Like, if you believe these higher things and it's a shift to 5D and we're all more loving, um, the actions <laughs> with the words, like if you believe the words and you believe all of the words, then the actions, the integrity and the actions that you show with every thing that you do, that's what shows what you believe and, and what, what you really believe, I should say, in this um, picture. <laughs> people think that once they're in the fifth dimension, then they, can, they need to behave like it. And so there's a lot of people, they're like, well, we haven't shifted yet. Um, those are the ones that don't even know about the new earth uh, that we know, but it's that consciousness. Oh, well, when our consciousness changes, suddenly I'm going to be more of involved being I'm suddenly going to look at my inner work and I'm going to do x y and z but they're waiting for it to happen they um and those people have the same belief that you know it's all when each individual person's ready but you don't see the I don't see the follow through but then that may sound like judgment but ultimately these people have heard information from someone or a few people um, which is not the information we're getting in sessions and they're believing still others and their opinions and there's still that we have to question everything even the most popular gurus or 
uh, like uh, new age people um, because this is significant and there's so much going on. And I just, I just keep wanting to say to people who, who are saying, oh, this earth is going to be healed. Don't worry about it. When we shift into our consciousness, the earth is going to be healed. And I say, how are they going to heal the nuclear waste that has been spewing into the Pacific Ocean for 11 years? And then they say, what? <laughs> and it's like, okay, so we know from sessions because we've asked about it, what is going on there? Our planet is incredibly sick and it's not just the pollution. But it's like, can we just have a, I'd love to have a conversation with someone who's very firm about the shift just being a state of mind consciousness and we're still staying on this planet because tell me then your solutions to how we're going to make this planet healthy again right because you can't just think it that way and it just miraculously change no, because this is what they're going to say you know i create my reality right <laughs> oh yeah yeah. So there are those people that say, I, you know, I'm a, I manifest my reality. And we've asked that in questions too. Is it possible for us to manifest our reality? And it seems like if we want to see that our friends and family love us and support us, yes, we can create that reality. If, uh, but ultimately, we can't uh, uh, manifest uh, Gaia's consciousness into doing what we want. And there is a disconnect there. Absolutely. So I, I feel like because I've asked so many questions, so many, that I really feel quite confident in scratching every big question that there needs to be to understand this. And so when I first started getting this information, I was very, I, I still was confused because I still didn't have any, all of the bigger pieces. Now I feel like I could actually have a conversation with someone and keep asking them for them to question. Well, most people now know about a shift and they've heard of the term new earth because somehow we're just going to reset the earth and it's going to be magical. Um, I want to know how they get to that next step of that magical for them what have they been told what is it just trust you'll find out later just keep cool like i'm really curious of what the dialogue is that makes people still believe so firmly it's just a consciousness would be a good conversation to have with someone for sure <laughs> i mean um <laughs> it would it definitely be good uh, but the, definitely the key thing to take away from, from this on a bigger perspective is the questions. The questions are key to guiding uh, to uh, a perception. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, those questions that you were asking, like you were asking, like, how do you talk to someone? At some point you get to guiding and that looks like the questions that you're asking. Uh, that's why they're so awesome. It's, it's uh, once you have, you are solid in yourself and the information uh, and you know what you believe no matter what, then uh, to ask these questions really just opens up other people's minds into thinking because uh, they can think any way that is, it is all good. Um, but to truly, to, to help, uh, um, asking questions does help in a process yes absolutely absolutely um and we're still being told to not just trust blindly gurus um and especially ones who really don't give uh, all of the answers because if you're a guru you should be able to answer everything right I mean, I'm certainly, I'm not, a, I'm not even a G, let alone a guru by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, these people who blindly follow these influences, then it's like, well, so then if you want to repeat everything that they've ever said to you, explain. So, we, okay, so we all have a consciousness shift, even Gaia, I'm assuming, or do we even acknowledge her? I'm not too sure in these conversations. But so, so we have a conscious shift 
tell me again about the environment. Like, I'm not too sure. I haven't asked about um, whether the global warming is is a distraction and nonsense. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it is. I'm assuming that there is so much stuff in every industry that's not full integrity and truth and honor. Um, you know, I just, you know, I, I don't feel like I need to solve every riddle and mystery. I'm just focusing on the, the biggest stuff. Um, it's so intriguing. I just, I find this so fascinating and I'm not trying to, offend anyone I'm certainly not trying to ridicule any gurus because I know the stepping stones and I know that they're really helping people uh, ask these questions and and go with them I am really well, hold on. you can't you can't offend someone who who believes themselves I just want to throw that out there right. like if, if you if if you believe if you believe in yourself you can't get offended by what people have to say because it is their own opinions and they are welcome to their own opinions and we should celebrate anyone having an opinion um <laughs> yeah, very good point. there was a point for there was a place in my journey here where i wasn't listening to anyone's conscious mind apart from higher selves and subconsciouses and i just went i can't deal with 3D because it just doesn't make any logical sense to me. I'm just having conversations with people's higher selves um, and these higher dimensional beings because they seem to have uh, much more clarification on what the heck is going on here. And so I sort of see these influences as just 3D conscious minds trying to figure out their own journey and what's up and down and sideways. And so I kind of, I don't know who's out there and what people are saying. So that's why when I somehow find myself on Facebook and I'm, oh, someone's talking about the new earth and the, oh, it's still, 95% of the people still think it's a conscious shift, um, you know, and it's like, oh, okay. And, um, but you're right, Erica. It's just like when you love yourself profoundly and you know you're a good person and that, you know, you accept yourself um, other people's opinions of you doesn't bother you because you know and you have the strength within yourself to know um, that that's merely a reflection of them. Yeah, um, I want to say something that you just like literally was just in a lesson that you just posted um, about this. Um, can't remember right this second. I'll remember in like one minute now that I started I have, talking. <laughs> I listen to that session. I still don't listen to all the sessions that get played back. Um, so I, even though it's, even though I say those sessions, my consciousness is completely removed from from it because no one wants to hear really my 3D <laughs> consciousness processing all of this when there is information that the high dimensional beings want to share with us. Yeah, I remembered it, what it was. That once you, um, once you, um, uh, I don't know if it was like more of like once you have that self love, were you? Uh, know what you believe in and 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 trust in then um you don't when you come to the neutral state that's what it was when you come to the neutral state you don't judge other people like uh, what they're going through um uh there's not a judgment uh once you come to this neutrality and you 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 have this knowledge because you understand the you understand that it is a hard journey we, we we all work through this hard journey uh to come to this part um but uh so that's i do like that because when i do tr when we do talk and have and act with other people uh, uh to not be in a place of judgment of a place of just learning and wanting to expand and grow um every day it just Hmm. Yeah, I, I do know in my um, situation of helping empower people to, to look at their own, where they're stuck, 
um, you know, they may feel like it's judgment, but it's an observation of their behavior. So when they're oblivious to their own behavior and still lying to themselves, you know, they may not see uh, what the support is giving them um, to guide them because they're still confused. Yeah. Most times during this time, the, during times um, like this, it's just, um, it's just reflecting time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Reflecting time because it's just, is uh, just like all of us, we all experience these things with other people having uh, um, thoughts, just normal thoughts every day. And working through them yeah absolutely I find <laughs> that um I'm more better at being neutral with people I don't really know but it's when the people that I do know who are still stuck in these really not bad ruts but they're really struggling still I feel like because I'm tapped into them so much that that's when the pressure of their higher selves come in and like physically lean on me and be like push them <laughs> and it's not yeah it's like oh, I don't really want to and then they're kind of like it's going to get worse it's going to get worse and then I'm like well they can use their free will and then they're like, those are moments of choice yeah those are beautiful every single time those are moments of choice and it's not only one person everyone always thinks uh in their mind in those moments that uh, it is only them that is making a decision but usually everyone around you in some form or fashion or everyone in the conversation everyone's making a decision one party's making a decision to say something and other parties making a decision what they want to do and then it goes on to the next choice mm -hmm. uh, what is going to happen past that what decisions are all parties going to 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 make uh that is uh that's <laughs> yeah well i mean and there is no good or bad decisions or yeah it's all learning yeah, yeah and we know that we can apply that it's just um the pressure that i feel from their spiritual teams wanting them to really really take themselves in their situation with a bit more sincerity you know so i kind of there's a balance there because i have ignored lots of trying to guide people before and then I realize yeah is it just I'm just trying to find a balance as well from yeah from I feel like I feel like because the people that you're close to and that you know and you know that you're tapped into you see their fullest potential yeah. so it's like from your perspective it's just this like tough love this tough unconditional love it's like but i see you you know and i yeah, see but you're you. still that's the yeah you're still here like you're still yeah. here doing uh just like we're all Back. still here doing no matter what no matter what we come up in the what comes up in life or what comes up in a lesson that gets put up there or what gets said by anyone around us we're all still here. We're all still making yeah. a choice to push yeah. forward. And we all inside know what the reason why. All of our reasons are different. We all might have similar uh, big picture, but we all have different reasons why we're staying and why we're choosing these paths. Yeah. That's beautiful, Courtney. Thanks. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> it just feel like it's all, you know, it's all uh, about, uh, empowerment of self and I when I started really loving myself more and respecting myself more I kind of expected that treatment from others and so the unfortunate thing is when people don't love themselves and respect themselves that's how they treat others and they don't see it because they're still in their stuck situation where they can't see that their own behavior is reflecting and spreading out to others It reminds me of the part, sorry. It reminds so me go of ahead, the part Courtney. thinking about um, when it came through the me, 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 the all about <laughs> me, 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 and like not thinking about how your actions can affect 
you know, people around you and what you think of, you know, so within it's or one of the universal laws, but, um, you know, what you think about yourself is, yeah, ultimately how you're going to treat and think of others, but you're also going to carry that, you know, mentality of it's all about me or victim mentality or what, I don't know. Sorry. I don't know what I was going to say, that, but, um, but just taking the, the me, the me, me, me out of the, out of the picture so much. Yeah. All while working on yourself to, um, <laughs> to empower yourself, to empower, you know, others. It does start with you. But when you have this, um, I don't know, when you have this, like, only thinking about yourself in a negative way, I don't know. I think it's where the, the position of the ego lays. Is it? Yes. Or is it heightened? And when people have heightened egos, uh, they know all the words to spirituality. So they assume that, um, yeah, there is other things going on. It, it's, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful puzzle for everyone. And the journey is all unique. And I mm -hmm. love seeing uh, people uh, uh, blossom and explore and grow and be empowered with this work and with these sessions. I mean, that's incredible yeah. honor to experience that and see that and hear that. I mean, the emails I get from people just like bring me to tears because they're sharing something that's really valuable and personal to them about their own journey. And they're like, you're a part of it. And it's like, oh my gosh, like I can feel everyone's energy the more that we're connecting. And we haven't done a group healing for so long either, have we? That's something we could definitely uh, move forward with because I can, I hear and see some voices uh, from people that are connected to these sessions, but I still know that there is a whole amount of people that um, for whatever reason have been too shy to say hi. And it is an incredible journey. And for those people who are doing this by themselves, processing this work all by themselves and may not have any single one person to talk about this, I mean, I think that's incredibly challenging, but I also think incredibly powerful as well. Like there is so much beauty in the way everyone's processing this information and I honor everyone for it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like we've got totally off topic because I really wanted to, you know, really profoundly um, see how Courtney's doing as she is unpacking all of the information from the sessions because it's so profound and you shared that with whoever is resonating with this information and that's phenomenal. Well, I honestly, I, I mean, I was, I'm glad to be able to share. I don't feel like I, you know, did anything other than go through, have my own experience, but um, in any way that it helps people to process, you know, their, their own emotions, their own feelings of even grief of, um, just wrapping their heads around, around everything in the different dynamics. So I'm happy to be able to help in that way. <laughs> Uh, from your perspective, Erica, listening to the sessions, what were your takeaways from it? <laughs> um, uh, I, I obviously thought they were, um, uh, they were amazing, um, Courtney, uh, to, for you to share these, these, these personal things uh, in your life, uh, for the bigger growth of the collective. Um, it was, it was an amazing thing to be here and to experience. Um, I, I want to say that I feel compassion that your dad is staying for you guys. I, I felt that. Um, but I also like, uh, it felt the whole time cheering your dad on, uh, uh, just for the experience. Um, I've, 
I feel like uh, our minds are, uh, we hear that, that these bad things will be happening, but um, I think our minds are all uh, making uh, something like way more <laughs> greater, <laughs> uh, maybe more uh, horrible than what it might be, just because we don't uh, quite understand. Uh, not many of us have lived in a life that uh, we don't have social media and all these other things in our lives, laundry and, and events and all of this stuff. So um, to, to, to hear how they're gonna process after the shift and how they're going to take uh, the manual, the book um, and use it and the positivity to use it and just that experience of hearing, um, to me, it in a sense was comforting because it kind of gave that different perspective onto what is going on, what will be going on. Um, and then, uh, like, like I said about this last uh, one with, with the crazy brain thing <laughs> that you graciously volunteered for uh, to experience. Not expecting all that. <laughs> uh, I, I think I think you're you're fabulous for wanting to experience. Um, I thought from a weird scientific, if you even want to say that, a scientific. Uh, mind looking in I was I was like ooh, I like when they were trying to explain what was happening I was just like how interesting and how a, just a unique concept to be happening uh to be happening here um and obviously I was hoping that you weren't in too much pain mm -hmm. but then I was like I know that your higher self, they'll only let you experience as much as you could handle. Uh, so I had to, I, I firmly had uh, a faith in you and, and your abilities um, and your control and obviously in Joe's control. Uh, but it was, it was very uh, unique experience from this side. I know. <laughs> Over here, I'm like laughing. I'm like, it was so interesting. It was so, uh, the way they described it. <laughs> Uh, the change in your voice, even just the dramatic change. At one point, I told you at one point when like you couldn't, uh, you really couldn't talk. You were like paralyzed. When you were really talking, I forgot that it was even you. Like I forgot that it was even you at all there. I was just like listening and it was, sounded like someone else. It was the strangest feeling of just like not being there. Uh that yeah, it didn't sound like me to me <laughs> <laughs> it was very epic for them to paralyze you and then just allow you to speak I think that's what your body needed at that point because it was so overwhelmed and I have to confess and I've already told you both this um, and I think this is part of uh, me releasing the tensions and pressures that I feel but holy <laughs> I got the giggles when that robot voice came in. I was so relieved she was okay and that it was, you know, she's she her whole full body just fully deeply surrendered and just relaxed into it. And then that voice, I just, I'm so sorry, Courtney, but I just had to laugh. I thank goodness I put myself on mute because, you know, my children are so noisy in the background sometimes. So um, I had to laugh and just go, oh my God, I've had such an epic journey with her. I've got to get it together, get out these giggles. Um, so I am so sorry about that. <laughs> no, don't be. Oh my gosh. Everything that you were having to process and all the dimensions of, you know, me and being in the, like the, the physical realm, but also like the spiritual teams involved and I mean, you were like on this emotional roller coaster on the sidelines, like, but not, I mean, but right there with it all, but like, I, I just, 
imagine you're like shuffling all these beings and dimensions and you know and you just handled it so well while still allowing my subconscious higher self you know all feel at ease and even at ease even alongside of the discomfort Mm. you know I do know that they always try to do the best for us but it, I mean, because I have not listened back to the full session, or it, I, I think I've listened to one percent of that session since listening to it and experiencing it. And the um, my trust that they're doing exactly what they need to do, but sometimes they just um, it's too intensive, and we have to ask them to pull back the energy. And so I really had this firm belief that I needed to be your advocate to be able to say, guys, this is this is overwhelming like I all my senses were just saying this needs to be pulled back can you do this somehow not so extreme yeah I think it was something like that that you said that um made me feel complete like comfort and knowing that nothing was I was taken care of you know and nothing was going to go terribly wrong (laughs) I'm over here chuckling because like (laughs) If you've had a session with Joe, it's that thing she says. It's that thing. It's like the way she says it, and it just comforts you. Yeah, <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Joe, yeah. you say this thing. It's the way you say it. It's like so comforting, and it just relaxes you right back in, no matter what's happening. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um. And then I want to share this super inappropriate thing, but if people are still listening to this conversation, now they kind of (laughs) have some uh, gossip insight. Um, So Courtney and I were, as soon as I accepted the the responsibility of of compiling this information for the book, I got that heavy sense that someone on the old earth wanted to connect in. And I even asked the intercession, Is this possible for me to, because the whole concept of time is still a bendy little pretzel for us, but we accept it that we're just experiencing it linearly while it's not linear at all. Uh, And so we'd already had so many fun experiences with Nostradamus, where his consciousness was here, even though, you know, he's in a completely different timeline, um, everything. Uh, So the... The first session I was going to have with Courtney, I didn't know whether it was going to be me putting her under or me me being under. And so um, I kind of assumed maybe that first time I was going to connect, uh, that I would be connecting in and, and she would be asking him questions. But when we um, saw each other and she was all tucked up in bed and I was like, oh no, we're, we're putting her down. And then it was that experience of that density of that boulder and you you seeing him and, and all of that incredible journey. And I realized straight away when I saw you all ready and snuggled up, willing and ready to go, okay, this is your step that you need to experience it for yourself, what's happening. And, um, and it was a really beautiful stepping stone for you uh, because then we, you know, I think we, we had a few days and then we connected in with your dad where you could ask him the questions. And I remember after that first session, just my heart went out to you and I, I still could have emotions. I could still feel the emotions just here thinking about the journey that we have been on. And, and I remember just checking in with you asking if you're okay and and then and I just blurted out and I I almost I hated myself for saying this but uh when I'm talking I feel like I'm channeling most of the time anyway when I'm uh not focusing on it too much um and when I I was saying to you this is such a this is such a an honor for you to be able to to connect in with him this is a privilege and I just kept saying to you, this is a privilege. And I just was like, what the hell am I saying to this poor woman who is having this emotional experience that's so surreal? And I'm saying to her, 
you know, I mean, not that you were, you had always took the most pure, pure, mature approach to this. I know so many people that would be still emotionally traumatized from the very first session they had, you know, and you've always stepped up and taken this with dignity. And it's always been inspiring, inspiring. And I, and I always feel like we overshare our feelings and thoughts to each other anyway, because that's, you know, that's what we do as friends. And I just, and I remember sending that message to you and saying, how dare I even say those words? Like this, you know, you're having to go through all the processes of it and you reply back and you're like, I am totally knowing this is a privilege to have this connection. And it was like, oh, like you have inspired me and, and helped me process all of the emotions and we're experiencing your journey. And it is like, it's so close to, there's not, I mean, apart from if it was our own family members, it's, it's just so profound. Anyway, um, that's not the gossip that I was wanting to share. I went into a little tangent of our journey, but, and this is really gross. So if you're not interested in gross, uh, you know, skip forward uh, about a minute, but, you know, we finally get together again and I'm going to connect in with your dad and experience it, that for myself while you're asking him questions. And the entire session, I just had tears flowing through. It was they were releasing all of the emotions throughout the whole journey. I, I think we talked to him for an hour, maybe. I can't recall now. And just constant tears. And when you hear back, you can hear I'm congested. And um, I, the tears stopped as soon as Dolores came in. And um, she could feel the heaviness of both our hearts. And she just wanted to hug us and give us that, you know, support that she always does. Um, it was an incredible experience. Even when I read it in the book, I still cry. It's so powerful. There is so much. Oh, there's just so much purity in the information. It's so mind blowing. But the real gross gossip is that we finish and I turn the laptop over so um, I can see Courtney and she can see me. And I have got this ridiculous, this biggest like snot booger. Like it's the big, like I can't even, like, this is like, uh, it was like, she was like, I look like a turkey. <laughs> it was so disgusting. And I, I just, cause I had my head hanging down. I had my eyes closed the entire time. I could feel the stream of tears just running down. I could tell that my nose was congested and it wasn't until I go to see Courtney to see her, to say to her, are you okay? That was so hard, but so good at the same time. And I have got this gigantic clear book that's hanging off my nose. And it was like, a, uh, like an icicle, but not frozen. It was so ridiculous and I laughed so hard and I just know this is my coping mechanism is just uh, give me these uh, funny things just to um, get out of the seriousness of it because it is serious. I had to think, my gosh, you know, like this work, I believe in this work so much, but if there was a shadow of a doubt putting you through that, Courtney, would be probably the most cruelest thing anyone could ever experience. And I know your higher self loves you. And I know that I have not pushed you. This work hasn't pushed you into uh, having some fake experience. This is so profound. I fully believe it. But I went through all the emotions and, you know, just that whole thought of, oh, gosh, if this doesn't actually happen, how torturous would this be for nothing for Courtney? I ha went out for you. I overthink things. I always have. I always will. But it has been an incredible journey. Oh, and I know that when, I mean, when you said that or typed it first, I don't remember which, but um, it was, it was exactly what, it's exactly what I needed to hear. And it like immediately snapped of like, to that perception of like, whoa, like then it became like, whoa, like 
yes, this, I do feel privileged to have had this experience and to be able to go through and know the, uh, the, the what's to come, the connection with my dad, the like leave, I mean, all of it, all of it. it, I, I mean, it is so beyond powerful to me and so beyond like your work, you know, it's just, it's bigger. It's more than I can even like wrap my head around, to be honest. But I do feel grateful, humbled, and privileged to be able to have this whole connection and experience and go through it all. I really do. I really do. When I, when I was, I think when I was really worried and concerned of how you're processing it, because um, I think the very first, you know, first thing in the morning, I'm messaging you, asking you how you're doing from that night. And I'm really concerned about, I mean, normally, I mean, you would be totally entitled if you wanted to just have a complete breakdown, you know, like this is not, this is not, you know, this, for some people, this, you know, this could pause them forever. And, you know, I was really concerned because I wanted to reach out and we had that experience and they were, it was so purposeful and so significant and so important that I really just wanted to make sure you were okay because my responsibility still feels like it's with you to make sure that you are being supported through this because there is not that many people that you can share this with, even though it's super public to all the people listening. Um, <sighs> me personally, I mean, we have the group who sees and adores you and respects you and honors you so much for what you have been going through. Um, and I was so concerned that I felt like they took over when I was voice messaging you and they were like, put it into the perspective because there is going to be so many people on the old earth pining for those people who are no longer there, wishing that they could have one connection to be able to know that they're okay. Like, it's like, you know, it's not like you're in prison and you get one phone call. I don't even know if that's real, but it's like the sort of the equivalent of calling in and just having that reassurance that, everything is okay and oh my gosh like the thing he was he wasn't like screaming but he was like really making you know that he is doing the work like he just repeated that and he just said that like I felt like he was saying that the whole time I'm doing it I'm applying it I'm doing it I'm doing it I'm doing it he wanted you to know more than anything that he respected you for this experience and the journey that you were preparing and helping him for. And he's so in tune with what you had to go through now, which he is completely oblivious to. And it's just, oh, it's so incredible. Um, and I want to say something that I feel like it's almost inappropriate, but it's so beautiful, the connections that you have for each other and the honor that you have for each other, even though you will never be able to profoundly experience that and exchange that at the same time. Right. I know. Well, what is so, I, I want, I feel this draw to say this in this moment um, with this whole experience, uh, what makes it a, a different perspective, uh, even um, near and dear to all of us. Uh, it's, it is the fact of, of you standing in yourself, in your truth, him telling you those words, it's him telling you he is standing in himself, in who he is meant to be, who he is. Um, so yes, he's telling you he's doing the work, but uh, he is also saying, hey, I, I'm, I, am, I have found myself. I have found my true self. And, 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 and you guys, uh, yes, we are all, you're experiencing this, uh, 
but you volunteered you you both it's so uh great i we i am grateful to be here and to see you guys you both as together you volunteer to experience all of this into to to step up and and give everyone else this knowledge uh if if those aren't bigger beings then please show me what bigger mm. beings look like <laughs> well like i was saying too you know earlier that it really does make me feel even without him knowing like it, the whole thing like it makes me feel even closer to him but yeah I mean, and that's the ultimate goal for everyone is to stand in their mm -hmm. place of empowerment, you know? If we are in ourselves, we are also together. Yes, yes. But I tell you, when I see him in June, it's going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a lot on my mind. Yeah. But yeah it's we will be with you. Not really yeah. with you, but. If you want us to be with you, some of us can be with you. <laughs> that is the hardest thing. Have you thought about how you're going to, I mean, have you sent him the Dolores Cannon books? Have you, I mean, how are you? No, but I'm going to take them. I'm going to take the Dolores books with me. Um, I do. I don't have the physical copy of um, the three waves and I want to get that for him um and I will I just I haven't sent it to him I'm thinking I'm just going to take that with me and I've thought about leaving the um the manual somewhere in an envelope and with my own like personal letter too and then like texting him at some point maybe I don't like when it's time I don't know but I'm gonna leave it somewhere in his house <laughs> yeah You're like I have to kind of hide it but then not kind of hide it. No, I, and I, that's, I, I haven't dwelled on that part of it too much just because I know that I'm going to leave it and I figure it'll, it will unfold as it's supposed to when I'm there. I'll just know what to do. Like, do I hand it to him and I say, look, there's, here's some books I want you to read. And he's a reader anyway, so that's good. So here's some books that I want you to read. And um, when the time's right, I want, I want you to read this. Yeah, oh my gosh. I don't think that's even, oh gosh. Yeah, I like, I know that it will unfold as it should be and there is no need to worry. And I know you've got- yeah, I'm trusting that, I really am. I'm, I'm, and I do that with a lot of different things. I'm like, I'm not, there's no sense in worrying about it. There's no sense of dwelling over it. Like, I'll know yeah. things can change and shift, you know, like, yeah yeah I'll, well, I'll feel it out what we keep hearing about the experience of this shift is so profoundly beautiful and even though we get nervous about the thought of it potentially people you know they want to know the date they want to know this they want to know that I mean the reality is we have to enjoy it and I remember like last year like almost this time last year Dolores came into session. And she was like, when the shift happens, surrender in. Because you resist it. If you resist it, it will be so much more harder. So it was interesting that she said that way back then. And I remember, I try to remember everything that Dolores has said in sessions. And, you know, it makes sense. Anything we resist, it instantly becomes harder. It becomes such harder work. Yep, we just have to flow. Yeah. Flow and as it happens, be in now. Courtney. Um, be in now every time. Yeah. Courtney, I just wanted to say, like, it did feel like you know, he knew that there was something going on, but he just didn't think it was the right time for you and he had other assumptions. And so, you know, there is so much. I don't know if you want to do another session because of things have like I don't know if things have changed or um he has been getting healing or upgrades I mean it's I'm not going to push anything nor do I ever but you know you know that we can always have this connection if you wanted more clarity for how to process this 
um, it did seem like he knew something big was on your mind. And so it was nice for him to see you, but he was wondering why you could, why it was being held back. But then, as he said, there's no way he could have been prepared for it either. Um, but before I leave, I think that, I think it would help or it would be good to ask some questions before going up to visit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, totally. I, I but yeah, he said he could see, I remember um, him saying he thought that it was, he could tell that there was something heavy on my mind and just, you know, jump or just assumed that it was had to do with marriage or something like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> such a parent thing <laughs> yeah right. I wanted to I wanted to take whatever was consuming you off your mind so you could have a fun time and enjoy it and yeah, it was oh, such a mind bend. Um, anyway, I just, I have loved these experiences. They have profoundly broken me emotionally to be able to build myself up, to be able to respect profoundly the old earth. The importance and significance of it is profound. And it is so purposeful. And it has been an incredible experience to compile this information I want to thank everyone who feels compelled to get the pdf printed and bound um, and to leave them wherever they feel intuitively that they will I feel like we're a huge worldwide tribe trying to get this information out so we know the value of these sessions and work and we want to give and pay, pay forward um, this information to maybe a complete stranger. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. For doing so much <laughs> for this and for making it all happen. <laughs> Listen to who's talking. <laughs> Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> oh no for real like y'all have I mean I know you've put in a lot of hours too with the editing and stuff so so many I, I, just so many, reading so many part, <laughs> just reading my part was hard to it was hard to get through it was hard to read so I think there's just so part. many there's so many people who put into this um whether it's directly into this book or uh, uh, indirectly or after this, the, the work, uh, no matter how it comes, there are so many that feel compelled to this, like feel drawn to this as it is forming more and more every day. And uh, um, to sit in just that being grateful to, to be here, to know that I made uh, the choices along with all of everyone else, you guys made the choices to be here uh, and to do this work every day. Yeah. It's been such a great journey. The more people that could resonate with it and share that with me. So then I felt like, okay, so <laughs> it just made it more solid for me. And it was, you know, from the first part of it being so confusing and not getting all the answers and then getting small little pieces of the information in each different session. I mean, I don't know how Dolores, um, Dolores's patience must be like, you know, <laughs> godly level because seriously, she's done this for so many years and was just collecting pieces of puzzles, pieces of puzzles, pieces of puzzles. And I think she had, I mean, what, a dozen different puzzles to work with? I feel like I have got one puzzle. New Earth, Old Earth, The Shift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she gathered information for a long time. And how she pieced it all together is phenomenal.
Well, when I felt like we had got all the content in the book, then I suddenly just felt like, okay, so I can just relax knowing that it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be complete, but it's going to be a great stepping stone for them. And I just, I had that reflection moment of, oh, wow, cool. That's, that was accomplished. Yeah, of course, there's still the editing side of it, but the content it gives it structure and body. And it made me feel very pleased, but I still didn't feel like I had had done the book. And I know I got that big sense of, and I think I shared this with you, a big sense of this was not Joanne writing this book. This was uh, Johnny Cannon in the walk-in writing this book in honor of his wife and the work and I remember in the I think it was the first or second session that I had as a client for QHHT and he said that he wanted to finish the work he started and I really feel like this has been an amazing opportunity for him to do that and it is it is just another mind bend but it's just really beautiful and I just feel like there's so much of Dolores in this book um, because it really is her book, it is her journey, it is a dedication to her profound passion and devotion for humanity. Yeah, she paved the way for all of us and Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's like she like created the stones and the bricks to then lay them and then walk over them and then people just skimmer through them like she yeah back breaking work. It was incredible and I just I have I have such profound respect and honor for her and I just it's, it just feels like a privilege to be able to still do this um for her for humanity and just just ah, oh, just gives me so much joy. Um, is there any final messages, ladies, that you want to share about your experiences? Nope, I'm grateful that we had this conversation, this open conversation. I, I think it's cool. It's a cool one uh, with a lot of different perception and a different, even of our personalities, just to get out there and kind of so everyone can hear that we're all just <laughs> in a funny sense, normal people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, I agree. I, I really enjoyed this conversation. So thank you. Thank you for sharing uh, your time and your heart and your support with this and this work. Um, it's definitely a team. It's definitely a tribe. And I honor everyone always who can not only listen and respect this work but apply it because you're giving yourselves the greatest gift that you know we can get for ourselves at the moment and I just I just love that about everyone who has it's just so inspirational so thank you so much <laughs>